country and this lockdown more than ever has shown how badly the school is run because there's nothing to engage fans, there's no real once they don't have fights, there's nothing in the sport. The sport is only as good as the fights are made. If there's no big event, nobody cares, right? Are you going to tune in to watch those fast mattering cards from fight camp if they ever even take place? Yeah. It's, uh, well, are you, are you, I don't know if I'm going to tune in. I mean, pff, what good fight is there out there? Cheeseman Eggington. I mean, that's a good fight, but they're bashed up, aren't they, them two? Costa of Eddie. I mean, Ed Eggington's Barry Earn's little project, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Dave Allen's uh, Eddie's project, Dr. Frankenstein. You created a little monster there, aren't you, uh, Eddie? Created another little Jamie McDonald, like what Dennis created. Little monsters. The only fighters that are on that car that fight and stuff, Eddie doesn't really care about. Yeah. Including Dilly and White. Some at Purses on, the, on that, uh, on them fight camp shows are shocking, mate. Some at Purses. Some at money they've agreed to. It's unbelievable. It is on. They have, they have no choice, do they? They need to pay bills, so it's. Uh, yeah, they're making. Yeah. You heard Eddie what he said months ago, didn't you? When he said there's opportunities, there's going to be there's people are going to make out of this. Well, Eddie's going to charge everybody pay per view and pay them all very little. So he's on a double whammy. He's making up for the ticket sales that he can't have, isn't he? Exactly. That's it. The only person benefiting is Eddie. So he's going to say, "Well, look, it's either this fight or don't fight," and that's how it's going to go. And that's what he's going to say to people and like I said and you got Dave Allen there knocking fights back at a time like this he must be crazy well you probably have a lot of um, on the opponent side you'll have a lot of small ball fighters fighting basically for free just to be opponents on the matchroom card there's no like they're just getting the opponents in so cheap that they're fighting maybe for a few grand yeah. Well, I just think it's crazy. Do I think it's crazy the fact that why would you build, uh, what did Eddie claim it cost, a million pounds to build that thing? Nah, I don't believe that. He, his dad didn't pay, pay that for his house. Why would it cost? Why would he build such an expensive structure to run shows for cars that nobody can watch? Why does that even make sense? Why don't you just do it from TV studio like the rest of people? Listen, his dad's an accountant, isn't he? You know what they'll do? They'll build all sorts of stuff, get all sorts of receipts in, and give it to Uncle Sam. That's what they'll do, give it to the tax man. <laughs> Listen, mate, hey, them people can't lie straight in bed. No. Definitely can't. Don't, but, don't what do you, do you think? Go on. I'm going to ask you a question. Go on then. What do you make of Frank Warren's cards then? I think Frank Warren's cards are alright, aren't they? Yeah, I think some good trade fights. He's gone about his business uh, very well, hasn't he, Frank? He has. He hasn't been doing, he hasn't been doing 100 videos a day in his bedroom, has he? No. Like some. There's no need, is there, to do that amount of videos when there's no fights. Like, you know, when you look in and some of these boxes are doing videos being interviewed by Eddie, there's two or three hundred people watching. What's the point of that? Yeah. You're not building anybody's profile because nobody, nobody cares about these smaller fighters when they have no fight date or no big fight coming up. Something like Josh Kelly's on the card, sorry, on the videos. Why would I want to hear what he's got, what he's been doing during lockdown? It's pointless. Or what Shannon Courtney has to say, what he's been up to during lockdown. No, what you've got to understand is Coogan and them are just going to go to people who do views now. And if they say anything controversial in the interview, they'll take that out and they'll do a 40 minute sit down and they might take a couple of minutes out of it and put it somewhere else and it's out for more views and it's a double whammy, isn't it? 
it's about money for these people it's not about boxing content it's like I've been saying for months I'm not saying Coogan's a bad interview he's very good but he's only interviewing a select group of people there's more than them yeah. people in boxing isn't there there's more than match room fighters um, there you go and also he could do more stuff like you you know speak to like them this is a great time to speak to people like Clinton Woods and others to get a better understanding about they, you know, what they've done in their careers and how boxing has changed because that's the kind of stuff that we want to hear. We don't need to hear what Shannon Corp has been doing during lockdown, do we? Why did you get Dennis on to talk about what's happening with Eurosport and BBC and stuff like that? Because he's not going to want to upset the apple cart, is he? He's only going to want to keep the two paymasters happy, MTK and her. You're not going to be bothered about anybody else. That's why he can't get Dennis on because of MTK, can he? That's why what? Because of MTK he doesn't want to get Dennis on because that's a similar type of promoter, isn't it? He doesn't want to give exposure to promoters that promote more of all shows. Well, it's a yeah, that's it. Mate, that's why he doesn't want to do it. They're all, they've all been found out, haven't they, now? They're all in, shitting in the same pot. But I want to see some proper questions asked about these drug... Why are you going on about Miller when you're not going on about the next man? It's all got to be equal. Yeah, exactly. What, um, what's the next thing you're going to do? Are you going to do it? This whole Luke Campbell versus Warren Garcia thing that's been coming out today that because Fortuna's pulled out of the Warren Garcia fight, Luke Campbell might be mandatory. Luke Campbell's shot to amazing. bits in my opinion. I think Luke yeah, Campbell's think shot to bits, mate. Yeah, I went to see that Lomachenko fight and him I was there um, watching it the O2 and he fought well but that fight took so much out of him and he must be like 32 or 33 he's also had a long amateur career so he, I, yeah I think he's there for the taking for Ryan Garcia even though I don't rate Ryan particularly he lives in a million pound house near Umber Bridge Luke <laughs> got a big massive house so he's, he's done alright out of the game to say he's not won a world title yeah, it must have been a money from that Linares fight and the few other world title shots, yeah. He probably made a hundred grand or two hundred grand from that Lomachenko fight. He made a bit more than that, won't he? Yeah, possibly. You know, Matthew can be stingy with first, right? The great stuff for pay for the use. You know, all that chat there, any of us. You know, the pay for the first. Bit. Listen, I'm starting to fear for the sport at the moment, mate, with what's going on. These cards are utter garbage that they're putting on, mate. At least they're putting, at least they're putting boxing on, but it's utter crap. I mean, Frank's in much better, but it's better. Them shows he's putting on, but... It, it looks to me like all a bit of desperation. I agree. Um, I think this would have been the time when there isn't much live sports and it's all quite tense. If I were running boxing, why don't they just take them off for some of these shows and showcase beds and the fights and talent? Isn't that the normal thing to do? Because why wait for six, seven months and then put the big fights on when everybody's focused on a new Premier League season, everything else that's going on? Why are they so, why aren't they willing to take a loss to actually grow boxing? They go back to my first point that everybody's in it for themselves, so what then all the promoters say, let's put on good shows and keep people engaged in sport, they're just gonna lose more and more fans. I don't know, maybe. I don't know mate, I just think that they're, they're just gonna keep lying, aren't they, to us? Yeah. That's think, what I um, think. What Terry said in his podcast, um, about people maybe not going as much live events when boxing with service could be a thing because people are used to watching on TV and just think I don't want to pay 100 quid for a matchroom ticket to watch fighters I don't know due to get to the O2 and pay over through the nose for drinks and food and everything else they might think actually I'm just going to have some mates around and watch it in mine so I'm not going to bother with these live events because I've been oh. doing without them for so long Who said that? Rob Tebbit? 
No, Terry said that in his podcast. Oh, did he? Guys, just sent me them. I have to listen to them when I get back. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. But I think it's right that people will probably just look at Foxy and say, "Can't be bothered to go to these events. I'll just watch it from home and save the money." Maybe. I mean, I've had this conversation with Dennis, and he's looking to put on a, a show in uh, Sheffield, the Tommy Frank World Title Fight, but. What, how's he going to go on fly, flying Flores over from Mexico? I mean, how's that going to work? And does he have to be here two weeks? And what about all this testing and this and that? And is it, is it, I don't know, there's that many logistics. You could just quite easily write off this year, you know. Yeah, he probably could. And also, even if you fly him over and he's here for two weeks, you probably have to put him up in a hotel for two weeks, so that makes everything a lot more expensive. <laughs> Knowing Dennis, he'll ask him to stop at mine to cut up, to save money. So yeah, that's good, Dennis. Stop at Porky's. I'll yeah, put I him think, up on his team. Yeah, you, you can keep them awake every night so they lose the fight. You oh, know, yeah. and, uh, they do for some fighters where they do the uh, fight extinguisher in the middle of the night. Oh, I'll be doing all that. I, 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 I've got something that will keep him up all night. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Well, they are from Mexico, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure they'll uh, oblige. Yeah, yeah. Listen, when Carlos de Leon came to Sheffield to fight Johnny Nelson in the worst fight that Sheffield's ever seen at all levels, they took him. Uh, they took him around Sheffield, got him out of his head. They give him every drug you could give him. Took him to Omega on Attercliffe for a sauna and a massage. And he still flogged Johnny. <laughs> still flogged him. They give it as a draw. And then he's pretty flogged him. You know, I, I once tried, because everybody says the worst fight you'll ever see. I once tried to watch that fight, and I watched about three rounds, and I just said, I can't watch it. I'm, it's so bad, it's, it's unwatchable. People need to go and watch Johnny Nelson versus Carlos De Leon. Then get back to me, or come see me and say I don't know not about boxing. Then go and watch that. Sit through that. Well, I had to sit through it in crowd, and I took a load of people there, <laughs> and, they, and they've never been to a boxing match in my life, and they've never been to one since. So well done, Johnny Nelson, damaging the sport. Yeah, uh, <laughs> how many of those people did you lose as friends since then? How many what? How many people stopped being your friends after that night? Because that's a way, weird way of torturing people in my opinion. Yeah, oh my god. Porky, where are your fetishes here? This is a stinker, everybody's throwing the plastic beakers. <laughs> Honestly, it was shocking. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but anyway, listen, Rico, it's been great having you on, mate. Yeah, we should uh, catch up separately this weekend. And yeah, we'll catch up. We'll have a better chat and uh, yeah, give my. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird time to talk about boxing because the only thing that's going on is just turmoil, but nothing to actually talk about. So, thanks yeah. for having me on the panel, anyway. And, no problem. You know, keep up the good work. I've enjoyed your videos. And, I'm sure many others have been entertained uh, during lockdown with some of your funny videos. Magic car, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> you take care, mate. Take care, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye. 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 Well, that was my that was my good friend Rico Helier. He writes for a few boxing uh, websites. For those of you who don't know, Rico was the one who started. Porky's Corner for me. So I'm not tech minded, am I? And uh, if you go on to Twitter, he, uh, he is at L E A D underscore right, at lead right. He's a very smart kid, he's from Finland, he's only 29. Uh, lives in London, speaks very good English. And he's just closed the Manchester City Puma deal. How's about that then? Hey? Eh? So, he's a big cheese! He is a real high <laughs> I got that at Scarface last night when I was bored. 
when I get bored I put Scarface on. So that's about it. Just in Nottingham now. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to the White Rhino. Get Peter Fury rung up, David. You've got his number. Get him rung up and get the fight made. If you get beat, they'll bring you back. They'll bring you back. Well, they brought you back after David Price lost. Don't burn your bridges, David, for a pound note. Alright? Because if this epidemic spikes again, you might not get another chance for another year. So a burning hand is worth two in the bush. So talk to me about bush when when somebody mentions the word bush to me it brings out the devil in me <laughs> peace out do apologize as well for bad connection on Rico's phone but it is what it is